Hey, I'm Chase. This is my CTO, Mark. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes to review what we're working on in the Pervious. We're excited to show you. Um, we've made kind of, I think, significant strides uh, developing tools to enable censorship resistant tech stacks. Um, we think, um, as you know, each one of the uh, centralized third party in intermediaries we've grown to rely upon uh, can potentially serve as a kill switch for. Uh, whether it's business operations and operational integrity um, or just interacting with society uh, kind of writ large. These are vulnerabilities uh, that we think have a deleterious effect on society and commerce. And uh, so we set out to basically develop a means to ensure um, the uncensorable component or the means to interact with society in a way that you can't be arbitrarily deplatformed. And so we developed an API uh, built on the Lightning Network, uh, on top of which uh, we developed a dynamic VPN and a few other things uh, to basically enable the secure uh, transport, um, hosting, and access to data on any target uh, cloud server. And uh, we think this will allow the prevention of uh, arbitrary deplatforming attempts, meritless DCMA. Uh, takedown notices or requests, and arbitrary service interruptions. Um, so yeah, without further ado, Mark, I'll let you take it from here and show them some live uh, product. Sure. Um, what we have here are two machines across the world from each other. The one on the right is in one end of the planet, and the one in the uh, left in green is on the other end of the planet. At the top of each third of each window is, the, is their own local lightning node. And the lightning node provides a shield by which all the services and content is hidden behind. On top of the lightning network, it uses encryption, a hop by hop encryption to hide and obscure every node in the path. Um, the content is hosted within the user's data center in their home, on their mobile phone, wherever they want their uh, data to be either access or, um, or to be served to others in the world. And we basically have two modes by which, by which uh, clients or peers can access data. They can either access this data directly through the Lightning Network from one end to the other. And the Lightning Network does not have the ability to process large amounts of traffic. So in that case, it's smaller command and control traffic. We can control servers, we can control endpoints, and we can serve small bits of information. If an emergency tweet needs to go out, if an emergency action message can go out, that's perfectly acceptable over the Lightning Network. But if you want to push a podcast, if you want to push a movie, if you want to push a book that's banned for whatever reason, we can do that with an out-of-band connection uh, that's also controlled via the Lightning Network. We've developed all of this. So I'd like to demonstrate some of that now. So um, if we look at this little, this little web page in the center here, we have two fields. And the first field is how many seconds a user would like to access at high speed a dynamically developed or dynamically allocated VPN to another peer on the network. And, and this big hash is the client's public key. And that public key is is known only to the Lightning Network, not on the internet, nowhere else knows it. No one else in the world can see it. No one else can utilize that public key for other than communications on that, on that network. So I'm gonna put that here for a second, just to bring your eyes to the bottom left-hand corner of the red node. There's a ping set up to the bottom left-hand corner of the left green node, and the same thing back to the right node. When I initiate the connection, the Lightning Network will be commanded via the Impervious API, and a payment will be made, and the connection will be built that fast. It costs one Satoshi for this network. They run for 10 seconds or any arbitrary amount of time you want to set, and then it goes away. The configurations on both ends are deleted. The private keys are deleted. The public keys are deleted. And if you want to do it again, not a problem. Just hit back button on the browser, change your timings, and hit send. It's literally quite that easy. For um, another demonstration in this web browser, um, this web browser has a 
proxy connection to his local lightning node. And that local lightning node can be inside your house, it could be inside your mobile phone, it could be inside the data center, but your browser is proxying into this lightning node. You ask for normal websites and the far end serving node, the one on the other side of the world, if it happens to have that content that you would like, it will serve it back to you. Now, like I said earlier, the Lightning Network can only process small amounts of data. So in this example, we're just showing small websites, but we could have also used the dynamic VPN to build an out of band connection and you could get Facebook or something like that. So, so I have a couple test websites. So here's test.com. And as you can see in the background, these are Lightning messages being sent back and forth, encrypted hop by hop by hop, and it costs one Satoshi for this data. If I go to another website, uh, let's say um, uh, book.com, this is not going out onto the internet. It's being hosted on the far end lightning node. That far end lightning node can, contains all of this traffic or it contains all of this content. And we also have the ability to proxy onto the real world internet. We can go to Facebook and so forth, but that will require the out of band VPN because it needs a lot more bandwidth. But we can mechanize that. That's not a problem. And the third example is actually tweeting through the network. So if I'm a dissident in a country and I have a local LND node in my house, I can command and control that using the impervious API to do things on my behalf across the Lightning Network around the world somewhere else. So in this case, I need to send a tweet across the world because I'm in an active denied area. My country doesn't allow tweeting, but the impervious API can allow that. So if I set up a tweet and I post it here and I hit save, it will go out onto the internet and actually send that out there for you. And it's and using the lightning network as a transport layer. And so Twitter's kind of arbitrary here, um, but because we can, it can be forward facing to anything, but you yeah. should notice that in your feed when you watch this video. Fantastic. And there it is. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, so again, we just showed you the API, the dynamic VPN built on top of it, uh, impervious net um, to basically an impervious internet um, so there's a lot of opportunity to build on the API and, uh, we'd love to explore what that might look like, um, as we move forward and, and help to basically have a censorship resistant, um, standard, um, across organizations and possibly even nation states. So yeah, thanks for your time and thanks Mark. Thank you.